everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rachel and this is Stitched Up. So today's video is going to be a pattern review and the pattern that I'm reviewing today is what I'm wearing which is the I Am Patterns Gaia Top. Now I Am Patterns are a French pattern company. They've been quite popular in the sewing community for the last couple of years. They've got a number of patterns out there for all different types of garments and uh, yeah it's the first time that I've actually ever made anything from them so I thought it would be interesting for you to hear my thoughts. So the reason I chose this pattern was because as we're heading into spring and summer I'm really wanting to make lots more cami tops but I wanted something just a little bit different so that my wardrobe isn't just overloaded with Ogden camis and very little else. Kate from the fold line actually showed this pattern on their latest vlog which she put out last weekend. I will link to it down below so you can go and have a look. And when I saw that I thought yeah I really like that. So I quickly went over to the Iron Pattern site and bought the PDF pattern. So the PDF cost about 12 euros which I will be honest I think is a little bit on the steep side for a PDF pattern. And what you get is A4 size that you can print off at home. You also get the AO copy that you can obviously send to a printer to have it printed off like a, a full size pattern piece. Um, and obviously you get the pattern instructions as well. Now the pattern pieces, the PDF pattern comes out on around about 22 pages and all the pieces did stick together quite easily. So there wasn't any issue with that at all. Um, the pattern instructions, uh, I will be honest with you, I was a little bit disappointed. Normally, most indie companies, one of their sort of key added value features really is that they produce beautiful pattern booklets. I know that doesn't always come across when you buy the PDF version, but they're generally very detailed, there's lots of colour, there's lots of little extras in there as well to sort of really make you feel that you're buying a, a good high quality product. I'll be honest with you, I didn't get that from this particular pattern, from Iron Patterns. What you get with the instructions, especially on the PDF version, obviously I can't account for what you get in the um, paper copy, but on the PDF version you get four pages of A4, which is essentially that. That's it. Um, and I think that's quite brief, I'll be honest, especially for the cost of the pattern. Now the pattern itself comes in sizes 36 to 46, which is European sizes. Um, in the UK sizing that works out to of an 8 to 18, which I do think is fairly limited. So, you know, lots of people in the sewing community, the reason they turn to sewing their own patterns is because they find that a lot of ready to wear either doesn't fit them or the size range is quite limited. So it's quite disappointing to find an indie pattern company producing patterns in ready to wear size ranges. Um, so I do think that's something that they should look at for the future because it does exclude lots of, lots of people that would probably want to make this pattern. Having said that, I do think that it's a quite a generous fit. I made the size 42 which equates to a bust of 37, a waist of 29 and a half and a hip of 39 and a half. Um, my current measurements are a bust of 37, my waist is now a 29 and a half and my hips are still 43. So. Um, so and yeah and I found this quite a generous fit it is obviously designed to be a loose fit as well so so that's okay now the pattern comes with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance which is something to bear in mind obviously most patterns we tend to think of a standard seam allowance of around about 5 8 of an inch so that's just something to make sure that you read the pattern instructions carefully and that you don't use that bigger seam allowance because obviously that's going to alter the fit of the garment. What I would say about the finished vest is that I absolutely love it, but the finished vest that I'm wearing is not exactly how the pattern dictates you to sew it up. And I'll explain a little bit more about that. So the pattern recommends you to use light to medium weight woven fabric. So it recommends things like poplin, linen, chambray, viscose crepe and wax print fabrics. Now I'm quite surprised that it recommends wax print fabrics. I've used a, a heavy, quite a heavy crepe fabric and you can see that when you put the ruler loops 
around the shoulders it gives this lovely draping effect here now to me a wax print fabric is not even a medium weight fabric i would put it more towards the heavier weight end and i don't think that it would sit right um, I think it would, I don't think you'd get the same drape, I think it would stick out, so that's not particularly a fabric that I would recommend for this pattern. Now the other thing that the instructions, what I would say about the instructions are that they are quite sparse, having said that it does say that it's an intermediate pattern. Um, I would say that if you are fairly inexperienced, if the pattern instructions were better, this would be a top that you could easily make, but the pattern instructions are not great. Now, the reason I say that is because it misses out some key techniques that I think you need to know to be able to sew this garment up to make it look professional and to make it look less homemade so that you end up with a well-fitting garment that hangs correctly and that looks nice. And I'll give you an example of that. So this top has got a facing that goes obviously all the way around the neckline um, and right down to the V. Now the facing pieces, the instructions do not tell you to interface. If you're using a lightweight fabric, you're going to need to interface those, those facing pieces to get it to sit nicely and not be too flimsy. So that's really quite surprising that it doesn't mention that in the instructions. In addition to that, this V-neck before you actually sew the facing on and when you've cut the pattern pieces out one of the first things that you should do is stay stitch this neckline to make sure that it doesn't stretch out before you attach the facing. The instructions don't mention anything about stay stitching at all and what would concern me is that if you don't stay stitch this neckline it's going to end up um, by the time you finish manipulating your pattern pieces and sewing it all together it's going to end up where it all stretches out and you're not going to have a nicely sitting um, top. So that again that really surprises me. The other thing that it mentions is with these rouleau loops and this was the big crux of the thing for me that made me think this is really not very good. It actually mentions using ribbon for the rouleau loops. Now if you want to go ahead and use contrasting ribbon go ahead and do that, that's absolutely fine. But you know, I wanted an elegant, classy looking camisole top. And for me, I wanted rouleau loops that were in the same fabric as the actual main top. And there is nowhere in the pattern instructions where it tells you to do that or how to make them or anything like that. All it tells you for these, um, these rouleau loops is to use ribbon, to get a piece of ribbon sew them together around here and I'm sorry I, I just think that's that I don't think that that's really good advice I'll be perfectly honest that's not something that I would want to do and I do think the instructions should give you the option of how to make these to match the match the top that you're making if that's the kind of look that you want to go for one of the other disappointing aspects of this pattern was that um, when I printed out all the pattern pieces and stuck them all together, there wasn't a single notch on any pattern piece and that's something that I have never come across before. On every garment pattern that I have ever bought, whether that's been a commercial pattern um, from the big four or whether it's been an indie designer pattern, has always had notches on it so that you can obviously match up your pattern pieces. There wasn't a single notch on any of the pattern pieces for this pattern. In addition, there were no short and all length and lines as well. So again, if you're quite inexperienced, now bearing in mind, it's a simple, straightforward pattern. There are only sort of two main pattern pieces and then the facing pieces. But if you're quite inexperienced, you're gonna need those, those notches and those shorten and lengthen lines to know where about you need to alter the pattern if you do want to alter it. So again, I was really quite disappointed in that. A couple of the other points in the instructions are that when you, um, it doesn't give you alternatives on what to do. So for instance, round the armholes, it tells you to use bias tape. Um, doesn't give you any, any um, 
instructions on how to make your own bias tape out of the fabric if you wanted to do that. It just tells you to purchase some bias tape to use for the armholes. When it comes to finishing off the edges of the facing, it just tells you to overlock it. It doesn't give you an option if you don't have an overlocker. There's lots of little details like that in the instructions that I think if they'd have actually paid a little bit more attention, they could have given people more options to finish the garment as to what suits them. So for instance, if you're using more of a sheer fabric, you might want to make French seams, for instance. So there's just a few things in the instructions that I do think, um, I think it feels like they've just rushed this pattern out and not given people enough detail. So all in all, what I would say is I do like the finished top that I've made, but I had to use my own sewing knowledge to make sure that I ended up with a top that I would be happy to wear. And that included knowing how to make ruler loops so that I could make these, um, these the tab details over the shoulder seams to match the, the top. Um, also knowing that I needed to stay stitch this v-neck because it is quite a low v-neck. It does come to sort of the top of my cleavage. And it's, it's, you know, if I hadn't have stay stitched that, it, I can imagine that this would have just stretched out beyond all recognition and wouldn't now be laying nice and flat. Um, what I did do with the bottom of the hem, if I just show you, is I have created a very narrow rolled hem and I did that on my overlocker. So it's the first time I've ever actually used my overlocker to create a narrow ro rolled hem, but on this crepe fabric, I think it looks quite nice and um, has worked really well. So if I just show you the finished top, so here you can see that, um, yeah, I've, what I actually did with this pattern was I lengthened it by an inch and I created the um, length and lines where I felt they needed to be on the pattern pieces. So this is the front pattern piece here. I don't know if that's coming up very well, but as you can see, there are absolutely no notches on this printed on this pattern piece in the armhole where you would normally expect. There are also no notches on the side seam at all as well. Now you could argue that this is a straightforward pattern and you don't really need them but I still think it's a pretty poor show for the amount you're paying for this pattern that it doesn't have any notches on. Um, there are no lengthen or shorten lines on the pattern but as you can see I created my own sort of about um, three quarters of the way down the front pattern piece I just basically cut through and added on an inch at that point. Yeah so this is the finished top and the actual finished garment I absolutely love. I really love it and I will make it again. Um, what I actually did was I created my own bias tape out of leftovers of the fabric and I've just hand stitched that down all the way around the armholes. You can probably see, I've tried to do it as neatly as I can and make it as blind as I can but there are the odd little stitch marks but um, yeah this, I, I love it, I really do love it. I've got the facing sitting nicely, um, the little rouleau loops that I created out of the fabric, uh, they are just stitched um, hand stitched at the back so that they don't move about and um, yeah it's a lovely lovely top um, but I will be honest I, I do think for the amount of money that you're paying for this pattern I think the instructions could be clearer I think there could be more detailed and I, I do think that there are a lot of omissions from the pattern um, that make it just not very good value. So I'll be honest with you, I don't know if this is representative of other I am patterns patterns because obviously it is the first one that I've made but it has put me off paying out, you know, hard earned money for more of their patterns if the instructions are still going to be not that great and if they're going to miss off key things like notches and um, areas where you can shorten and lengthen patterns. Um, when I had, a, I did have a good look around on the internet to see if there were any more reviews of this pattern and I couldn't find any. And overall, the most of the reviews that I have found of iron patterns tend to be fairly positive. Um, I did look on pattern review and there was um, a, a review of a pattern 
I think it was one of their earlier patterns on there, um, which was mentioned some of the similar things that, that I've mentioned today, such as lack of notches, lack of telling you where to use interfacing, and not even mentioning interfacing in you know some of the facing pieces and things like that. And this was a pattern review that goes back three years now. So it seems that you know things haven't really changed. So yeah, I don't know if I would purchase another pattern from them, being perfectly honest. Having said that, I do like the top that I've made. Um, but I do think there are better pattern companies out there with better instructions and that just provide more value for money. So I hope you found that useful and yeah please let me know down below in the comments if you've ever made a pattern by I Am Patterns. What did you think to it? Did you come across any issues? Um, it'd be really useful for you to share that with us and uh, yeah I hope you like my top. I will be making more. Um, I've got some um, more of this crepe fabric but I also bought some in black and like a deep red so I'm looking forward to making another another couple of tops because I think it's quite flattering and um, yeah looking forward to wearing these in the coming summer months. So you take care of yourselves and I'll hope to be back really soon. Bye!